Just before his crucifixion, Jesus prayed to the Father with these words, I have glorified you on the earth, I have finished the work which you've given me to do. Now, if we didn't know better, we might suppose that he was talking about tasks, such as healing the sick, raising the dead, preaching sermons, and so forth. But there was something more. Beyond his amazing works, there was another type of assignment which he had, which concerned not activities, but people. God had sent Jesus to the earth to raise up disciples, to mentor, love, encourage, and train men and women to be his followers and take his message to the ends of the earth. Jesus took these people assignments very seriously, and he seemed to take great satisfaction that all save one were still with him to the end. We who follow Jesus also have assignments from the Father. But sometimes the heavenly to-do list that we imagine for ourselves only consists of specific jobs, writing a book, teaching a class, singing for the Lord, being an usher in the church, and so forth. But we cannot forget those other assignments which are even more important, the people assignments. And we all have them, people divinely placed in our lives that God calls us to love, nurture, encourage, sometimes financially assist, and bear with, not for a few minutes or a few days, but for years or decades or even a whole lifetime. Some of these people assignments we choose. When a man and a woman say, I do, at the altar, they voluntarily make that spouse their assignment for as long as they both live. And every child born to that union becomes another people assignment given by God to both mother and father. Now, these people assignments are both expected and accepted. But life not only provides us with the expected, it nearly always surprises us with the unexpected as well. In marriage, couples often don't have any idea of the major flaws that lie either dormant or hidden within their spouses during those days of courtship. When we have children, we know they won't be perfect, but we assume they'll at least be relatively normal. But sometimes they're not even close to normal. They may have an incredibly strong will, or they may be born with a birth defect or autism. Sometimes, with severely handicapped children, the parents' entire lives must revolve around that child. This is one people assignment they never asked for, never expected, and never dreamed would be the case. Our people assignments can come from many different situations. It may be an adult child who becomes mentally ill and can no longer work, or an acquaintance who has no friends and is frequently depressed. You don't know exactly why it is, but you sense deeply that Christ is calling you to come alongside that person and love them, befriend them, and spend time with them in a way that no one else is willing to do. People assignments are always costly. They cost time, they often cost money, and they can be emotionally draining. But we cannot shirk our assignments. They're just as much our job as showing up for work on time, mowing our lawn, or taking our car for an oil change. A perfect example of this was the late Dr. John McQuilkin, whose wife Muriel was stricken with Alzheimer's disease. Over time, her mental facilities diminished. In the fog that she lived in, she became more and more dependent upon John. When she was with her loving husband, she felt safe, but when they were apart, she was terrified. John soon recognized that his wife needed him desperately. He resigned from his position as president of Columbia University, and he gave his reasons in these words. It is clear to me that Muriel needs me now full time. My decision was made, in a way, 42 years ago when I promised to care for Muriel in sickness and in health till death do us part. So as a man of my word, integrity has something to do with it. Duty, however, can be grim and stoic, but there is more. I love Muriel. She's a delight to me. Her childlike dependence and confidence in me, her warm love, occasional flashes of that wit I used to relish so, her happy spirit and tough resilience in the face of her continual distressing frustration. I don't have to care for her. I get to. It is a high honor to care for so wonderful a person. It is clear that John McQuilkin took his people assignment very, very seriously. 
But as powerful as his example is to us, there is someone who is far better still in his love and commitment toward his loved ones, and that is Jesus Christ, the one who gave his life for his sheep, the one who has risen and ever lives to make intercession for them, the one who is able to keep and preserve us by his grace until the end. We are Jesus' assignment. Those who follow him have been assigned to him by the Father in heaven. And Jesus is incredibly committed and devoted to all his assignments.